Have you been looking for or trying to acquire these chemical compound looking amorphous materials? Have you been doing your best to get the one that's under additional rewards but it just never seems to drop? Well lucky for you I'm going to be showing all of you how to actually get the max odds for them to drop which would be the 25% along with the shape shifting for the amorphous material itself that way you have the max odds to get both and even enhance your chance of getting the item that you want that's probably the rare item like something along the lines of those ultimate bunny parts that are from these exact amorphous materials if this video teaches you something new or actually does help with your drop rates definitely go ahead and hit that like button and of course subscribe for more content on the first descendant coming up various gaming news and of course the hottest playthroughs and live streams all right guys but without further ado let's get into the video first and foremost let's go ahead and break down what the rewards actually are for these type of zone recon missions Zone Recon missions usually provide some very, very good loot off of the bosses once you defeat them. They're on a five minute timer, so you do want to go ahead and cycle them in some sort of rotation. That way you're not actually just sitting there for five minutes, not gathering other resources. I would say go ahead and do other Zone Recon missions in that same zone. That way you're still gathering that same resource if you need it, while also getting the rewards from the other zones as well. While scrolling through the rewards, you'll notice that they're broken up into two sections. One being the main reward, which is always something that you can get from going ahead and completing these zone recon missions. But at the very bottom, there is an additional reward for successful infiltration section. This usually includes two different items. One, another amorphous material that's harder to attain and rarer, and another being another chance at a shape stabilizer form and it'll correlate to the zone that it's in. So for Hagios, it'll be Shape Stabilizer Form 7, and so on and so forth for every other type that you go to in different lands. If you do it without doing anything else, any other preparation, you will get the lowest acquisition chance for those materials. So for the one in Hagios, Zone Recon Mission Forward Base, Volga Strategic Outpost, you will be at a 5% chance for an amorphous material pattern 113 to show up and a 0.5% chance for a shape stabilizer form 7 to show up as an additional no reward when you go ahead and complete this said mission. These chances, I don't even have to tell you, are extremely low and as a lot of people have figured out, even if you got a 20% chance, it is still an outcome that could be very rare for you if you're unlucky enough. Now, one thing a lot of people don't understand about these percent drops, they aren't cumulative. And a lot of people seem to be complaining like they are accumulative. Like, let's just say it's a 20% chance. That doesn't mean after 5 or 10 tries, you're going to get it. You have a 20% static chance of getting that item that you're wanting every time you run a dungeon, mission, whatever it would be. So, it doesn't matter how many times you run it you always have an 80% chance in this scenario of not getting the item you want, which is obviously bigger than 20 and the reason that you're not getting the drops that you're wanting. But a way to go ahead and boost this, if you look at the additional reward for successful infiltration, you'll see that it has a variance. It says for amorphous material pattern 113, the acquisition chance is 5% to 25%, and for the additional shape stabilizer form 7, it's 0.5% to 3.5%. And I was wondering for a long time, well, how do you get it to the top percentage? Is there some way? Why doesn't the game tell you? I was getting a little bit frustrated. And then I found out about sharing. Guys, for these late game farms, for anything that requires an ultimate descendant, you need to have Sharon. The reason is, Sharon, as of right now, to my knowledge, is the only one who can successfully infiltrate an actual strike zone or a recon zone mission. The reason being is Sharon can go ahead and stealth up and actually activate all of the tubes instead of having to hit them with abilities or gunshots, and she will destroy them like that instead. All you have to do as Sharon is walk up while cloaked as the enemies haven't seen you yet, so just hide behind the wall, cloak up as you're running in, go ahead and get to the zone where you can activate one of these tubes, and hold A on it. 
After that, run to the next one until you've completed all of the tubes in the area. Then the boss will spawn as normal, and anybody who's not Sharon, stealthed up, or hiding around some corner so they're not seen by the enemy and ruining the infiltration, they can come in, shoot an enemy or the boss itself, and everyone who's a part of this will get the reward. Now this leads me to my next point, and a big PSA for every player of the First Descendant out there. Do not interrupt a Sharon's infiltration. Let them do what they need to do. Run in. Do not aggro the enemy. And the enemy AI has like insane aggro even if they can't really see you. And sometimes they'll go and try to find you which will still ruin the infiltration for Sharon. Just be very far away. If you want to make sure you can get a shot in before, like if they kill the boss fast, carry a sniper with you from that far away location and hit an enemy as soon as the boss spawns. That way you don't miss out on the rewards if they're killing the boss fast. But under no circumstances, please, 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 I know a lot of Sharons are getting angry. A lot of people trying to grind these harder to get amorphous materials. Do not interrupt Sharons when they're doing this. You're going to drive them to all go into private lobbies. And then you yourself, if you don't have Sharon, won't be able to get these harder to get amorphous materials and additional shape stabilizers. Now, getting into Sharon herself, building Sharon is actually very straightforward. In fact, it's one of the most straightforward characters to build since you don't need corresponding materials to actually build Sharon. The only things that you actually need are the Sharon Code, the Sharon Spiral Catalyst, the Sharon Stabilizer, and the Sharon Enhanced Cells. You need no additional consumable materials in order to build her. All of these materials are all findable in the normal or common versions of dungeons. The enhanced cells being able to be found in the Echo Swamp Seed Vault, the Sharon Stabilizer in the Echo Swamp The Chapel, Sharon Spiral Catalyst in Agna Desert's The Asylum, and the Sharon Code is available in Agna Desert's Caligo Ossuary. Once you have all these parts, you can go back to Albion and go over to the Magister, which is Anais, who's the researcher, and you can build Sharon, and it'll take you 16 real-life hours to go ahead and actually get Sharon, unless you want to put in some caliber to make that faster. You can even buy Sharon fully if you're willing to. You know, it's your money. You spend it how you want. You can go over to the shop, and you can go to Descendants. And you can actually just pick up Sharon for, I believe this is around $3. 300 caliber being around three real life dollars. I could be wrong on that, um, but she should be running at one of the lower rates. If you don't want to grind it out or you're like me and Drake and you're just getting super unlucky. We ran a dungeon 18 times for her stabilizer and we just could not get it. But all the other parts were coming up in like one, two or three tries. So you can get unlucky, as I mentioned before, the drop rate is the drop rate, and you just kind of got to get it through luck. Now, once you have Sharon, I definitely recommend you go ahead and do a farm for a wave mode. Now, it can be any wave mode, any defense mode, whatever it may be. They're going to be coming up on the map as a shield emblem. So an example would be if you go to the defense line on Fortress, right next to the spawn point, there is a shield icon. For the Defend Albion resources, those are really good and that's a late game one so it'll get you the most XP, but the enemies are going to be way harder. One that I recommend is White Knight Gulch. You can go ahead and go to the hatchery. Right next to that first uh, outpost uh, spawn point, there's going to be a special operation. It looks like two flags and like a star in between them, and it's called the Block Kuiper Mining. You can do that one. It's a lot easier, although it does get intense, and it helps level up your weapon proficiency really fast. And of course, Sharon's levels will be going through the roof. You'll get to like level 15 if you can make it to just wave 6. What I do recommend you doing is getting to level 24. Now, in order to get your actual stealth ability to actually last for four of those test tubes that you have to blow up for the zone recon missions you have to at the very least have it at level three but if you get it to level four which is at level 24 for sharon you'll definitely be able to go ahead and hit all of them if you don't have any skill duration modifiers or modules or you're doing it at a level two or level one stealth you will not be able to go ahead and hit all of the contraptions which means you'll have to do one or two get out of the zone recon zone 
wait for your stealth to come back up while not being found by any of the AI enemies, and then go back in and finish it off. That way the boss falls. If you don't want to go ahead and do that and hit them all in one go, I have a build that's very good for even a level 3 stealth sharing. Now, going to my Descendant modules, what works for me is this. I ended up having Shock Pug leveled up all the way. That way, I have an additional 10 module capacity slots for Sharon. On top of that, I did a fully maximized increased HP. That way, it was easier for me to run the wave mode and also just be able to survive these hard mode recon missions. After that, you're going to want to run Skill Extension Maximize as much as possible. This is going to up your skill duration by 36.5%, which also applies to your stealth. And then also, I recommend running Maximize Duration. This enhances your skill duration by 40%, but it makes your skill power modifier minus 21.1%. Luckily, my gun's good enough to where I don't really need to use her abilities, but if you can't kill some of these enemies, maybe get some help or make it so that you get a way better gun that way you can handle them with your gun instead of your abilities since they're going to be hitting a lot weaker now if you're running a level 3 stealth sharon you're going to need both the skill extension and the maximized duration and you'll barely be able to hit all four tubes as long as you stay in the running stance and know where you're going to get to each tube as quickly as possible once you get to level four it's a lot easier you have a lot more room to breathe and hit all of the tubes but at level two i'm not sure i didn't test it i think you will not be able to hit anything until you reach level three so definitely make sure to level up sharon to at least level three stealth now once you have all of that complete make sure to go ahead and go to your strike recon zone mission of choice and make sure that you're able to go ahead and hug up against the wall that way the enemies won't aggro immediately once they spawn in you can start running towards the mission or the first tube itself while stealthing. The enemy shouldn't aggro as long as you're the only person there. If there's someone else by you and they're moving in as well, this will aggro the enemies and in turn stop the infiltration from working. Once you hit all of the tubes that are necessary, sometimes it's three, sometimes it's four. I believe I may have seen one with five, but I'm not completely sure. Once you hit all of them, the boss will spawn. Everyone who's not in the party yet or wants to get the rewards can now shoot any enemy in the zone per usual or the boss, take down the boss per usual, and then you have the increased odds for that exact amorphous material or shape stabilizer that you will want. So, Shape Stabilizer 7, in the example I gave before, would be up to 3.5%, and Amorphous Material 113 will now be a 25% drop rate, just like Amorphous Material 112 on that exact recon zone. This will make farming insanely faster. I noticed that all day yesterday, I farmed for this last piece, the ultimate bunny piece that I needed off of this recon zone, and I didn't get a single one after farming for all day for about like six hours, I want to say, of actual gameplay in this exact mission. Of course, that was at a 5% rate. But now that I've been using Sharon, I was able to get six drops within an hour of running the exact same mission now that it's boosted at 25% drop rate odds. Other than that, guys, this method helped me tremendously in grinding up for Ultimate Bunny, who I currently just started building and queued up for research. And I hope it does the same for all of you on whatever grinding journey you guys are on where you need to run these recon missions. If this video helped you guys at all or helped your grind be even a little bit faster, please, please, please consider going ahead and supporting my channel by liking and subscribing as I'm going to be launching a lot more First Descendant content and it'll help me with the YouTube algorithm drop rate of getting some more people into the channel. Anyways, guys, that is it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope to catch you guys next time. Peace!